Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, picked up a new piece of iron for the shop here in the last week or so. This is a Famco 5C Arbor Press. This is, delivers about 12 tons of force when you're uh, pressing down on it. You can use it for all kinds of things, pressing out bearings. Uh, we can use it for doing uh, push broaching, all kinds of different operations. I have a, a little smaller Dake press over here that delivers, I don't know, it's about five tons or something like that. But I've had my eye out for one of these big Arbor Presses for quite some time because sometimes you just really need to get some force on something and uh, these things are great for that. And I've really been wanting one of these large floor mounted ones, kind of like what you see right here. And opportunity came up here in the last week or two. Uh, actually, my friend Andrew Alexander, who is out in the Texas area, uh, he goes by Blacksmith Tools over on Instagram. He's a collector of all kinds of uh, old vintage iron, a lot of blacksmithing tools, power hammers, anvils, uh, line shaft machinery, you name it. Uh, he actually came across this and shared it with me when I saw a picture of it. He, he texted me a picture and I'm like, man, I've been looking for one of those. And uh, we worked out a deal and this thing got shipped over to Georgia and it's mine now. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming in here and tearing this thing apart and starting a restoration on it. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to do my uh, Dake Arbor Press because we found a home for it already. Uh, I've got, I'm not going to say who it is right now, but someone was interested in that. They wanted to buy it. And part of the deal was is they wanted me to do a restoration on it before I sold it. So uh, we're actually going to be tearing both of these machines apart. Uh, we're going to be doing restoration on them, putting them back together. So uh, let's get in there. Before we do that, though, I want to show you a few of the neat little features on this uh, Famco unit. Uh, then we'll start tearing into them. So this area up here is where all the action takes place. You basically got uh, two ways that you can put press down on stuff on this. First, you got this little hand wheel over here. And interestingly, these, these units came with an optional, two options for this hand wheel. You got this hand wheel here, but you can actually put a lot of downward force just turning that wheel. They also had an option to this that had what, I, what they called a big ship's wheel. It was a larger diameter. It had handles on it. It looked kind of like, the, the, you know, like a, the big wheel that you drive an old ship with. Uh, unfortunately, this one didn't come with the ship's wheel. That would have been a really cool feature had it been on this one, but this right here is going to be great. Additionally, if you want to get more force going down, uh, you use the, the ratcheting lever here. And there's a handle that comes out of the top. I'm missing the handle. I can fabricate one of those. Right now, I'm just sticking a piece of a random pipe in here. This is actually a piece of conduit. It's really not the right, right uh, piece of pipe for this. But for demonstration purposes, you can see what's going on. So right in here, we kind of have this little geared uh, pawl and, and ratchet thing. So there's a little tab on the back back there that pushes on these teeth. It only goes in the down direction. But when you pull on this handle, you can see it comes in and it pushes down on that thing one click at a time. And that is putting about 12 tons of downward pressure on this when you do that. So, Nice little feature there for heavy duty pressing. And again, for most stuff, you can just come in here with this handle and get enough downward pressure to actually uh, do what's going on. Well, down here on the bottom end, we got this little table and it can actually adjust up and down. Now there should be what they call a daisy wheel that goes on here. It's a little round plate that has some different size slots in it. Of course, you can take that off and have this large slot. But if you got a smaller thing you're pressing on and need some more support, it had four different options in there for the width of this hole. I'm gonna have to fabricate one of those. In fact, guys, if anybody out there uh, has one of these and can give me some measurements and dimensions on that daisy wheel, I can, I found pictures of them online, but I wanna know the diameter and the thickness and the size of the slots so that I can properly uh, fabricate one of those, machine one of them, whatever, so that we can have uh, that piece back on here. Now down here, this table will move up and down. That was missing the little handle that goes on here, but with all my luck, I just happen to have a perfect handle that fits this thing. It's made for it. I mean, it's, 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 I think this is pretty much exactly what it would have been on here. But uh, you can adjust this table up and down uh, by cranking on this. There's a little uh, counterweighted lever back here that goes into these slots so that once you get it to where you want, you just kind of drop it down there. Gravity holds it in place. So uh, you can adjust this up and down. No problem at all. So 
I was really fortunate that I just happened to have this over in a drawer. When I was looking at this, I'm like, man, I, I seen, I've got a handle like that somewhere. And I went and dug around, and sure enough, this even has a little round shoulder that fits up on there. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that is the handle uh, that went on this machine uh, at one point in time. This is probably just a handle that you would buy stock somewhere and use it for all kinds of different applications. So anyway, that's a little bit about the, the Arbor Press. Let's start tearing her apart. So let's start by taking the hand wheel off the side. There's a set screw in the top, and I can tell this is not the correct set screw. They just got a socket cap screw in here. This probably would have originally been a, a true set screw. We can fix that when uh, it goes back together. Let's see. Feels like we may have a little bit of a ridge on the outside of this shaft. It's not wanting to come off. I'm gonna grab a file and see if I can hit that, clean it up a little bit so we can get that off. mushroom or something I can't get in there with a file so I got a dremel tool here with a little sanding disc on it and we're gonna go around this thing and see if we can clean it up all it took. So the next piece to come off is going to be this whole ratcheting head and it's on the heavy side and I really don't want to pick it up by myself. So I've got the uh, engine hoist in here to give me a little bit of help. Um, tell you what, let me see if I can just kind of slide this out to the end. And I'm going to put a little more tension on that. can uh, take that over to my workbench without having to strain my back. So now we can come in here and take the gear off and yep it just should slide all the way out. I got a uh, Woodruff key in there. This pin right here is a little locking pin that goes over in that head that can keep it from coming down and it's also what that arm rides on so it just comes right out no problem. This is a lock, and I can tell that threads are crooked on it. Go ahead and open this up, see what we gotta do in here. All right, so that looks like we just got a little adjusting piece in here. There's two, two bolts that goes up against this uh, little shoe and that just uh, takes up any wear in there. And we've got a similar shoe on this side with a couple of screws, but I think this will just come right on out now. That was that little piece of metal in there, that shoe that fell out. Fits right there. And now, looks like this whole shaft goes through here. Well, what we got here, there's a gear on the inside of this that is actually machined into the shaft. And there's a collar here. Should be the same diameter as the gear, but I think there's some burrs on this gear. And it's just going to have to be driven out. So I've got a lead hammer here. 
where we shouldn't be mushrooming on this uh, shaft. Let's see if I can get back here behind it. That's as far as I can take it with the lead hammer because we're flush. So now I got a brass punch and a regular hammer. And we're about out now. All right, I think we got it. All right, got that out. I'll clean this up over on the lathe. It's just rough from where that gear's been running in there and it's a little bit larger diameter. Uh, it's a little bit rough in there too. We'll have to hone that out, but that won't be no big deal. All right. Next thing I want to do is get this table off. I've got it hanging by my uh, uh, engine hoist right now, and there's a little shoe on the back of this, and we'll go ahead and take the little spring-loaded part out. I don't have a wrench this big, so we'll use my adjustable wrench here. Same thing on the other side, and we should have that loose where we can move it out. There we go. We got a little set screw here holding this, this little latch here that really just catches in that groove to keep this table from going up and down. And yeah, that's the jokers. I'm gonna get some oil down in there to get that apart. aggravating to get apart. I may not be able to get it apart. I'd like to get it apart though. Unfortunately, it doesn't go through. This is a blind hole on this side, so I can't really drive this out. So I don't know, I may have to I may have to leave it in there because that is not wanting to come apart. It's just been together too many years. Yeah, and back here there's a gear in the back here. It's got a set screw in it. Guys, I, I think it's just not worth the effort to try to take these components apart. So this one's also in a blind hole so I can't drive it out. Uh, We'll just clean it up real good. I think I can get in here and uh, get around all this stuff to clean it and paint it. So, um, all right, we're gonna leave this assembly as it is, I think. I'm gonna put this uh, set screw. I'm gonna leave it in there loose right now. We can tighten it up later. Gives me a little bit more mobility with it. I do wanna try to take this uh, ratchet assembly apart though. That part there was easy. A little paw comes off of there. And let's see what we gotta do here. All right, we're gonna try to drive this pin out now. I got an extra set of hands in the shop. Miles showed up. All right, kind of zip wiggle that. Hold it on this end too, so it doesn't fall off. There we go. Got those two castings separated. So I see a repair we're gonna have to make. Some of you guys may have already seen this, but uh, see this whole area here that's so worn out? This should be a slot that's about, you know, about that wide right there. But this is the part that pivots on that pin. So you pull on the handle up here 
and it pivots right here. And over the years, you can see it has just worn out this whole slot. So uh, probably what we will do is come in here and we're gonna ha have, just have to put a piece of material back in there. So uh, I'll figure out what we'll do. I will probably do a mechanical fastener and then do some brazing on top of that or something. Along those lines, uh, I'll figure that out once we get in there, but it's, it's gonna have to be a pretty good, pretty good uh, uh, rep uh, repair to hold up, but we need to get that material back in there so that it will have that proper fulcrum when you, when you pull on the, the, the lever. So anyway, we'll worry about that in a little bit. All right, guys, we got everything out here, and next step is I want to get this thing, all the paint stripped off of it, and uh, get it cleaned up. And we're going to do a little bit of cheating here, so I've got some paint stripper. This is Citrus Strip. It's a fairly environmentally friendly uh, paint stripper. We're going to paint this stuff on here. We'll let it bubble up, and then I'm going to take a pressure washer, and we'll pressure wash it off. And I found that that's pretty good for just stripping paint off of stuff fairly easily. And then we'll have to come in here with a wire wheel and kind of finish it out. Uh, but the chemical stripping uh, works pretty good. And the citrus strip is a pretty dang good product as well. So uh, I'll probably do this off camera because it's just going to be wet and messy. But uh, that's the reason I have Miles here to help me today. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working on getting this casting ready for getting painted and it's been a little bit of a chore. Of course, we first stripped the old paint off using a chemical stripper, uh, pressure washer, then came in here with a wire wheel and got any remaining uh, paint, rust, etc., off. And in some of these little hard to reach areas, I use a needle scaler, which allows me to kind of get in there. It's just basically is an air powered tool that drives in these hardened little pins and it will flake off any kind of uh, paint, rust, etc., that's in there, it gets in those hard to reach areas. Up here, particularly on this side of the casting, I think that when this was in the mold, this was the top, and there were quite a few casting defects uh, up here, particularly up in this area, some down a little bit lower. Basically just some kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, some holes in the casting. It wasn't really a nice finish on it. And honestly, guys, that's pretty common uh, in large castings like this. And I did just what the factory usually does. We filled those in where you really can't see them. It's more of a cosmetic thing. Uh, it's not like it's, it's really interfering with the structural integrity of a casting like this right here. Uh, in some cases it probably could, but not on something like this. So I took some Bondo type filler and a couple layers, some sanding, whatever, got all those filled in real nice and uh, should take a nice coat of paint now. So we're ready now to go ahead and uh, paint it. Now, normally on cast iron, I get this question all the time. So do you prime it? Why, don't, why didn't you use a primer? Well, normally on cast iron, I don't really always use a primer when I'm painting uh, because with cast iron, you've got a nice rough surface that you're, you're uh, you're painting onto. And basically what a primer does is it gives some kind of grit for that paint to stick to. And on a rough casting, now machine surface maybe not, but on a rough casting, it's usually just not that big of a deal on cast iron. I'm usually painting with a brush anyway. Uh, so the, 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 the primer really doesn't help me out. However, in this case, because we have done some sanding and we, we do have this Bondo on here, I am gonna go ahead and shoot this thing with, a, with some primer first. Uh, if nothing else, it will kind of help me see if there's any areas that I need to go back and give some more attention to with the filler and stuff. So uh, I've just got some rattle cans that will come in here. We're going to spray a primer on it. Uh, once I'm happy with how everything looks, uh, I'm going to shoot it with some paint. And I think in this case, I'm actually going to spray paint it rather than brush on the paint, uh, just simply because of the kind of paint I'm going to use. So we'll get to that in a little bit. So anyway, that's where we're kind of at. I'm going to get in here and get started priming. So guys, we've got this hit sprayed over now with just a coat of gray primer. And uh, this is just to, again, mainly because we use this body filler up here. I wanna make sure we had something for the paint to stick to nice. Uh, this is dried and cured now. And again, I'm just using rattle cans. I'm not trying to get every little defect out of this casting. This is a rough casting. We're gonna leave it as that. Uh, you know, if I've, I, it's, not a, it's not a Ferrari, and I'm not going for that type of finish here. Uh, I want it to look like a casting, and that's what we're going after. Now, as far as paint goes on this, uh, for this one, I'm going to use uh, Rust-Oleum hammered paint, and this is actually a gray color. It's a dark gray. 
uh, color. I've used this hammer tone type paint before, and I really like the way it looks on certain things, and I think it's going to look good on this. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and lay some down. It's kind of a darker gray, and when you get through with it, it kind of leaves that hammered look, which I think looks really good on cast iron. Again, you don't have a perfectly smooth surface, and I think that this hammered paint actually kind of helps that rough texture of the cast iron blend into everything. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. So let's just go ahead and get a coat of this put on here. I'll probably come back and put a second coat on it after this has a chance to cure. Well, here you go, guys. Uh, got the base anyway painted and got it primed. We got a coat of the paint on here. Again, this is that gray, um, what they call it, hammered paint from Rust-Oleum. Uh, I like the way it turned out. I think I like the color. Down here where the lettering is, they kind of had a little recessed area, so I painted that in black and then highlighted my letters in white. Uh, anyway, I kind of like the way that looks. I think it's going to look sharp. So anyway, got the main casting on this uh, big press all done. I've still got all the little smaller castings. I got to get cleaned up and painted and we got a little repair job we got to do to one piece over there. And that's probably going to be a separate video on that. Uh, and then hopefully we can start getting all this thing put back together and get this machine uh, back in operation. So that's the game plan. So with that, uh, I think that's going to be a wrap on this uh, episode. Uh, we're going to get on that repair job next and hopefully have that video coming up for you pretty soon. And um, anyway, with that, thanks for watching. As always, guys, I appreciate the views. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Leave me thumbs up if you like what you've seen. And comments are always appreciated. We'll talk to you later.